final in school history. For Kentucky, it would be their third in the last seven seasons. Here we go. Jill Gillen takes the first pass and a swing by Maggie Cartwright on the right side. How do you approach facing a team when the stakes just get higher? Last time they faced off, it was for an SEC title. Yeah, I mean, you have to focus on what you do well on your side of the net and take care of business. You can't think about what all the pressure around this match. With the delay hits it over. Maggie Cartwright will set up Taylor Head, and she is blocked by Ajani Taylor. Ajani Taylor and Reagan Rutherford for Kentucky block so beautifully next to one another. It's like synchronized blocking. They're perfectly on cue, and they close up every time. And remember, when these two teams last met on November 22nd, Kentucky blocked incredibly well. 11 blocks in that match. That was the difference. And Arkansas had a season-low 096 hitting percentage. And Reagan Rutherford is going to get that over. She is so important to what Kentucky wants to do. She missed six matches with an eye injury. She took a ball to the face in practice. And that's when Brooklyn DeLay really had to step up. Yeah, everybody stepped up around. And I feel like they got better as a team. And then she came back. And then they accelerated even more. But happy her in the lineup really balances the offense because she's that outlet on the right side to spread the offense. DeLay sets it over into the middle with Sanaya Pettis. Rutherford will take it on the right side and tooling the block off of Taylor Head. Two great defensive plays there by Molly Tuzzo there and left back for Kentucky. She got the first dig. Comes up underneath this tip with one hand. Excellent job allowing her hitters to be able to be offensive out of it. You know, if you were with us for the previous match, Nebraska has such great defensive specialists. The same thing for Kentucky. Elmer Bevan and Molly Tuzzo are incredible. Comes Cartwright, saved by Emma Grohl. Brooklyn delay, too much on the angle, and it's a point for Arkansas. Arkansas is undersized, but tries to score with their speed. Fastballs to the pins is the way that they score the most. That's the X factor, right, for Arkansas. They're so dangerous because they play with that chip on their shoulder. They were, most of them told, no, you're not going to play college volleyball. And Jason Watson in Arkansas said, yeah, we're going to figure it out. Which I love. I don't know about you, but I was considered undersized. I was told no by a lot of places. And that sticks with you for your entire collegiate career. You want to prove everyone wrong every time you step on the court. Rome going behind her to Reagan Rutherford, and it's a kill for Rutherford. She's got three. You're going to hear Grome to Rutherford a lot. That fastball to the right pin, and Reagan Rutherford's got incredible offensive range to score for Kentucky. An All-American last season, All-SEC this year. She is hitting 432 in the tournament through two matches. And gets the ace. Well, Craig Skinner, he doesn't make it easy on his teams, right? They play the toughest strength of schedule in the nation. And we asked him, you know, how did you manage and navigate this team when you come out three and seven on the season? And he said, we talk a lot about what if scenarios. What if we're three and seven? What if we're two and six? How are we going to handle that? And this group was able to figure it out. Well, Johnny Taylor will tell you, as an upperclassman, they were tested as leaders, right? And she said, luckily, this group wanted to be led. And so they just focused on what needed to be done. Can't do anything about being three and seven. All you can do in control is how you respond. And boy, did they. Johnny told us, I went in Coach Skinner's office and I said, look, are you OK, Coach? Because I mean, I'm struggling right now. <laughs> but they figured it out and won their seventh straight SEC championship. Gets Singer too much on the angle on the slide. A lot of adrenaline to start this match. Elise Getzinger trying to get things going out of the middle. Grom's already gone to her twice. Two hitting airs to start, but she's going to find her rhythm and be able to score out of the middle for Kentucky. Yeah, Elise Getzinger, number 11 in white. She could be a huge weapon, hitting 548 in the tournament so far. And Kentucky will take that point off the service error from Arkansas. Brooklyn DeLay, the SEC Freshman of the Year. Told us hearing that award come out, it was like a dream come true. Hogue running her middle, Pettis off of one foot. And here comes DeLay out of the back row. 
Hogue will try the same with Head. Bevan is there. Getzinger on the slide, but an easy contact for Cartwright to pick up. Erin Lamb gets the touch, and she has taken over that other outside hitter spot. Erin Lamb has been a bright spot ever since she's been an inserted into the lineup. They needed offense out of that position, and they weren't getting it consistently. She has been impressive for Kentucky. We see her last seven match numbers are great. This is her ninth straight match in that role, taking over for Megan Wilson, who's a good option off the bench now for Kentucky. Jillian Gillen, how high she gets up! She's 5'10", oh, and she's got so much five, seven. power. Five, seven. I was going to say, I think you just <laughs> added a couple inches, but look at that power. She's got so much jump, and she's so dynamic when she gets off the ground. So much fun to watch. You know, she's 5'7", Taylor Head is 5'10", both undersized outside. And nobody could get there. At least Getzinger made sure of it, too. That time, setter Hannah Hogue for Arkansas ran into her middle blocker, Zoe Evans, trying to get to that ball. The three passers for Arkansas have passed next to one another the last three years. Gillen takes this one. She'll get the swing off. So good. You know where the balls go. You know they're going to set Jill Gill, and yet she still finds a way to score because she's so powerful and she can move the ball so well. She explodes off the floor in the speed of her arm, and the way she uses the entire court is so impressive. Now Jason Watson, her head coach, told us she's had to become really resilient because they're just going to continue to set her. So she has to figure it out if it's not working. But she's gotten so good at that, and a kill by Aaron Lamb. Jason Watson, most wins as a head coach in a season at 27. It's his third straight 20-win season at Arkansas. That COVID year was so important for this Arkansas team. They really came together. And I also think being left out of the NCAA tournament a couple times was something that they now wear with the badge of honor as Gillen gets another kill here for the Arkansas Razorbacks. They have that chip, as you mentioned, being left out when they felt like they were deserving has added to that hunger. They want to make a statement here in this NCAA tournament. They want to make a statement against the team they know very, very well from the SEC in Kentucky. They're in their first round of 16 since 1998. The one-handed save from Courtney Jackson. But Cartwright gets stopped by Aaron Lamb. Maggie Cartwright needs to swing at that ball for a point. Lamb waiting for that little ding shot, throws it down for the Kentucky block. To your own point, Aaron Lamb, you know what you're going to get out of her. She's really good at keeping the ball in play. When she's got a shot or a set that she likes, she'll go up and she'll really go with power and she'll get a kill. But they know what to expect from her on that outside pin. An ace for Molly Tuzzo. Molly Tezzo is such a fantastic athlete, just creating some pressure, going after Courtney Jackson, the libero for Arkansas, who's a very good passer, but enough pace to get away from her. This one sails long on Tuzzo. Kentucky up 12 to 8 here in this first set. The winner of this match will take on Nebraska on Saturday in the round of eight. Back to delay. Jackson on the dig. Hogue will set Gillen out of the back row. And a traffic jam on the Kentucky side of the net. And Sanaya Pettis with the rejection. That's a really nice job by Pettis staying home. That was an off the ball set there from Grome. Rather than just clearing out and going to the outside, she stays home, stays in the middle to be able to block a Johnny Teeler. That's just discipline, footwork, and eye work. In a smart play, knowing that they like to set Teeler in transition. Rutherford with the tip. Courtney Jackson is there. Cartwright off hands and off of Bevan. And that's the swing I want to see to score the point. You want to be aggressive against this Kentucky team. Watch Start this ball. It starts with the pancake. Courtney Jackson gets under it. And then Taylor Head goes across the court where Maggie Cartwright gets there to score. Grum to Rutherford. Looking for the angle, no touch. And here comes Arkansas on a 4-0 run. You can tell they're in a rhythm now. The 
Rajani Teeler in the middle. Bevan. Back to Rutherford. But how about Reagan Rutherford? She's the right side blocker, slides all the way in because Teeler releases to the left side, solo block, and that is amazing help block from the right side of Rutherford. A veteran team for Kentucky, and you saw it there. Taylor head swing is long. Cats up three. Both teams trying to disrupt one another with serving strategies. We're going to see some short serves. We're going to see loading up that area one to that right back corner. Rutherford dug up by Jackson. Delay. Thrown back to Delay. Down the line. Hannah Hogue all over. What a dig. Getzinger in the middle. Pettis sends it back. Delay gets the touch. What a rally. We had about five wow digs in that last rally, and Delay finally ate. You just wondered, when are they going to figure it out? They always figure it out. And then, my goodness, 18 in a row. That's just what Craig Skinner's teams do. Figured it out in the best way on their way to seven straight SEC titles. And that hit the antenna to a point for the Cats. Arkansas digging balls, but unable to get swings after they dig the ball. They need to take care of that second ball so they can get that swing. Bevan grazing the tape, and she'll drop in the ace. And Arkansas wants to take a timeout as Kentucky told us, you know, I don't love playing them because one, it takes another SEC team True. out of the round of eight because only one of them can advance. Another way to look at it. Take her head on the swing. Hannah Hogue is going to try the middle back again with Pettis. Tuzzo's there. Delay right to the middle of the court for Brooklyn Delay, her second kill. We talk about Arkansas being undersized, but I feel like Kentucky matches up pretty well. They're very quick laterally, and they've been able to get out and close the block at the pins. A lot of schools cannot do that against Arkansas. Pettis, she has looked confident. Really nice run by Arkansas here. Pettis goes on that gap three set, starts with a great first touch. You put that pass on top of your setter's head, she's got all three options. Cartwright serving at delay. She'll get it back from Emma Grom. Jillian Gillen with the one arm save. Freshman of the year in the SEC. I mean, you could hear the pop on this ball when Brooklyn Delay hit it. Unbelievable free ball situation. Grome gets her all the way out to the antenna so she can turn this ball down line. She's got so much power as a true freshman. Really impressive. And for Arkansas, I don't think they love that matchup. Brooklyn Delay hitting over Hannah Hope. Such a good point. There's definitely a size disparity there between the two. You can see Kentucky trying to manipulate that matchup because Rutherford, or excuse me, Delay has been set 14 times, double the amount of the second next hitter. That makes sense. When you were in the front row, did you feel like people were oh, keying yeah, in definitely. on you? Definitely. Yeah. You feel that? You feel yeah. the heat? I would be afraid Bring of Holly <laughs> if I'm trying to key in on her. We called it the mouse block. Sneaky yeah. and low. <laughs> Getzinger off the slide, that's what we're used to seeing. And I love that they're getting her going. When she's involved in the offense, her blocking numbers go way up. She's so good off one foot. Watch her drive and get behind this ball one on one down that line. At least Getzinger, one of those players, she's always had energy, but now this season, the confident energy is there. She knew coming in she was going to be in that starting spot. It makes a big difference. They try it again. Cartwright handled it. Gillen, saved by delay. 
One-handed set by Grome and tipped over by Lamb. Hope going to head out of the back row, and it's out. The scouting report by both coaches is phenomenal. I mean, they are like on point, the coverage, they know what the other team wants to run in each rotation, and you see them just, it's, it's a chess match. Jillian Gillen, but a touch is called, point for Arkansas. But so fast. Yeah. Do you see how fast that set is from Hannah Hogue out to Joe Gill on the outside pin? You don't have a lot of time to react as a blocker, which makes it difficult to stop. How important is it for that to be fast because Gillen is undersized? Is that Extremely, helper? yes. It does. It, cre it, it creates holes in the block and seems to attack, and Jill Gill is able to get on top of those. The Craig Skinner is going to pull the green sheet. And they confirm the call, so Kentucky will be down to one challenge unless we go to a fifth set. Courtney Lyle, Holly McPeak, and Katie George with you. Nebraska got the sweep earlier here in Lincoln. They swept Georgia Tech, so they're on to Saturday, and the winner of this match will play the number one overall seed. Great serve. Just drops as soon as it crosses the net. Jada Lawson. Great movement on this ball. Gets away from the passer. 3-0 run now for Arkansas. Third time these two teams have met this season. The last time was for Kentucky to clinch the SEC title. This time for a spot in the round of eight. Aaron Lamb off the touch. A Kentucky team that started the season three and seven, played the toughest schedule in the nation, and then went on to win their conference title for the seventh straight year. Hannah Hogue back out to Jillian Gillen. Brooklyn Delay, the SEC Freshman of the Year. Cartwright. Emma Grohm back to Aaron Lamb. And she's got five kills, no errors. Aaron Lamb isolated on the left side. Emma Grohm pushes this ball out really fast. Watch the middle blocker. She is late to close, and Lamb gets on top of that quick for Kentucky. Last eight matches, Aaron Lamb has moved into that other outside oh hitter spot opposite Brooklyn Delay, taking over for Megan Wilson. She's been a bright spot. You know what to expect from her. She plays clean volleyball. Megan Wilson's got a lot of power, a lot of pop to her balls, but a little bit more unpredictable. When you get to this stage, you need somebody you can count on. They can count on Aaron Lamb right now. I'd say so. Five kills, hitting 625 in this first set, and there's a service error. It'll be set point for Kentucky. Kentucky won the first two meetings against Arkansas this season. The first one in five sets, the second was a sweep. Hope to Cartwright in the middle, and she tags the back row. Really nice job by Arkansas moving Cartwright around. You're used to seeing her on that out, that right side pin, but they bring her up the middle against two blocks. She's still able to find that seam on a higher set. Great movement, catches the defense off guard. Second set point for the Wildcats. And the overpass is eaten up by Maggie Cartwright. Jill Gillen, the all-SEC selection, a 5'7 outside hitter who can jump out of the gym. Aaron Lamb down the line. Nice save by Hogue. Reagan Rutherford. And another point for Arkansas. Arkansas is serving Kentucky in a rotation where Kentucky stacks on the right to keep Reagan Rutherford in a good position to score. If you watch number 13 in white on the front, she's gonna run all the way across 
to the left side of the court. It's an unusual passing rotation. Wonder if Craig Skinner will think about taking a timeout here. He, he will. will. And you have to wonder, Kentucky has played a great first set. And now you're 21 and that lit a fire under these Razorbacks. It certainly did. Fifth set point for Kentucky. And we play on. Wow. If I'm Craig Skin Skinner, they're attacking that stack down the line. Mm -hmm. You're going to push that stack the other way, and that's what they do. Good call. Give Arkansas a different look. Sixth set point. Rutherford. Hogue with the dig. Courtney Jackson on the bump to Cartwright. In comes Aaron Lamb. Hogue to Cartwright again. Rome backside to Rutherford and a little drama at the end, but Reagan Rutherford gets the set one victory for the Cats. And it wasn't easy. Arkansas put some pressure on them. I love this strategic. She could be inserted with no problem. Kentucky wins the first set 25 to 22. Arkansas made them work for it. Can they carry over that momentum here into set two? Rutherford with the tip, scooped up by Jackson. Cartwright. Down, Ajani Teeler and Brooklyn DeLay. Ajani Teeler so good laterally. We talked about that Becca Alec for Nebraska. Watch Ajani Teeler get all the way out, press her hands over the net, and take that ball away from Cartwright. It was the 2020 season that they asked Ajani Teeler to move to the middle from the right side. She is 5'10". What did they do? They won a national championship. She's an incredible athlete. Just the balls that she touches are really impressive. Because of the speed, the speed that you mentioned. She's not very big, definitely not as big as some of her opponents that she's going to face in this tournament. But that speed allows for her to make up for that size disparity. And one of the most competitive people you will meet. Brooklyn delay through the block. And that's how you get a, a swing out of a ball that's out of system, a nice apex ball to the net that allows delay to attack and kill that ball for Kentucky. Reagan Rutherford on the serve. Tipped by Taylor Head, scooped by Bevan. Delay. Head had to track it down. All she could do was bump that ball over and get Singer on the slide. Elise Getzinger heating up on that slide play. So hard to chase that as a middle blocker on the other side of the net. Evans late and Getzinger scores again. They go after Jill Gillen. And again, the set behind Taylor Head. I want to point out, and I think this is interesting about Kentucky's defense, Eleanor Bevan, the Libro in the blue jersey is playing right back right now. Usually speaking, liberos play left back, but Molly Tuzzo is such a good left back defender. They swap them in these rotations. Just speaks to the versatility of their backcourt defense. And keep in mind, Tuzzo is a true freshman. Mm -hmm. She's so much fun to watch. I oh, absolutely wow. love her. Incredible athlete, by the way. This girl could attack in the front row if they needed her to. One of her X factors, too, they said, uh, Craig Skinner told us she's a great learner. She had to adjust some little technical things and did it so quickly. And, and that's what makes an athlete stand out. But Bevan, as that right back defender, is gobbling up all those tips over the block. Nothing is dropping. Taylor Head and Bevan is there. Delay takes it. Boom! Tezza was stepping in the way to set that, and Delay calls her off because she wants to swing at the. Watch this ball. Tezza's running to set it, and Delay says, No, I'm going to take it. Thank you. <laughs> Brooklyn Delay had to step up when Reagan Rutherford went down for six matches with an eye injury. That's when Delay moved to six rotations. It was the plan all along, just maybe not that quickly for Brooklyn Delay. Maggie Cartwright on the swing and the kill for the Hawks. I mean, look at the elevation here. Hogue sets her all the way to the antenna so she can turn this down the line. Bevan tries to get her hand on it, but just not in time. There's so much power and pace behind Cartwright's swing. Lamb, long point Razorbacks. 
Whitworth takes the pass. They'll set Delay out of the back row. Look at her turn it. And that's an area where Brooklyn Delay has really improved. First, she became a six rotation player for Kentucky. Then they added the back row attack, and she has been hitting for such a high number. It makes such a difference when you're a front row setter to have that third option out of the back row. Really keeps defenses honest. Hold it to head. Taylor head take two. Two back. Taylor had attacking over Emma Groom, that smaller blocker on the right side for Kentucky, challenging her down that line. They also call Kentucky in the net on that play. Groom throws it up for a Johnny Taylor. Jill Gillen sneaking the ball through. Great effort by Kentucky on the pursuit. But again, Jill Gill recognizing what's in front of her. She's going to go and abuse the hands of Emma Grome being undersized, et cetera, in right front. Jillian Gillen, second in career kills at Arkansas. She's one of two in program history with 2,000 as that sails long on the angle for Aaron Lamb. Now Arkansas on a 3-0 run, their first lead. Oh Service error. Kentucky. Checking into the game for the Wildcat number 10, Reagan Rutherford. Back to our number four, Emma Grohl. Grome right at Gillen. Pettis on one foot. Grome to a Johnny Taylor. Look at her get up in the air. We talked about a Johnny Taylor's speed and in transition, she works so hard. As a middle blocker, they have to work to get in position to hit that quick tempo ball, and she is so good at that. Hope trying Pettis again. Aaron Lamb by herself. Grom to Taylor, back to back. And I love Emma Grom going right back to the well. Johnny Taylor gets you a kill. Well, let's move her a little bit further away from me on a three gap. And look at the excitement and urgency from Johnny Taylor. Beautiful shot down the line from Jill Gillen. You don't see this often, but Reagan Rutherford and Johnny Teeler got tied up a little bit. They don't make it all the way out to that line in time to close it and seal it off. Joe Gillen, high in the air, just gets the fingertips of Reagan Rutherford for the kill. You know, how, how about recognizing that she had a sliver uh -huh. to find down that Thread line? Thread that needle. Reagan Rutherford has been missing that ball angle. She usually is able to hit it very sharp, but she's missed three in this match already. Rutherford hitting under 100 right now. A player that hits 324 on the year. Lamb trying to swipe it off the small block of Hannah Hogue. Power punch from Jill Gillen, who does not have an attacking ear. And here comes Arkansas, right? They're playing defense, able to score in transition. And Jill Gillen on that left pin, so fast on the ball. And with every kill that you see from Jill Gillen, the entire team raises their confidence. She fuels them. Oh, feeding Gillen, she just has to tip. It comes in fast to the back corner, goes Aaron Lamb. Kentucky quick defensively as well. And another heads up play by the left side player. Look at this ball by Rutherford. She just throws it up and then Lamb takes the second ball instead of setting it. Tied at 10 all here in set two. Kentucky won the first set 25 at 22. Tuzzo with the back set to delay. 
Gillen off the block. Bevan hustling. She did. So much power. I mean, that is a sealed block, and yet she's able to pop them back because of the power of the shot. Mind you, she's three feet off the net doing that. Mind you, she's 5'7 doing that. Also that. We joke with Jason Watson, do you have a lot of undersized outside hitters emailing you now? And he said, yes, but you have to be able to jump. And Jill Gillen can definitely do that. Hogue with the hustle to lay out for it, Cartwright. And a double called on Arkansas. We're seeing some really nice rallies, great defensive play on both sides. We are, I mean, you know, everybody knows what the other team's gonna do, so it's all about execution. No secrets between these two at meeting number three on the year. Cartwright in the middle. Rome with one hand. She sets her middle with one hand. So Getzinger comes off the net, passes his ball a little bit too tight, right? But Grom has to go up with her chest facing the net, just barely lifts this ball so that Getzinger can get the kill. Unbelievable play, so athletic. And Gillen takes the momentum right back with kill number nine. Back serving for Arkansas number 10, Jill Gillen. Jill Gillen talked about her career, and, and she said age 14, that was when people started to tell her she wasn't going to be able to play college volleyball until she finally found somebody that told her yes, and that was Jason Watson. I strongly dislike that people put limitations on it, because they did it to me, too. You're too small to play in college. I had to lie about my height just to get recruited. It's ridiculous. In a special athlete like this, I cannot stand that people put limitations on young athletes. When you have intangibles and you have heart, trumps all kind of measurable. Anything can happen. But it's fun to see inspirational stories like Jill Gillen and what she's been able to do at Arkansas. Gillen with the pass. And Taylor Head just long on the swing. And Kentucky is the first to 15. To punch, Taylor Head is hitting for negative numbers. She only has one kill on 19 swings. We're used to seeing those two together put up big numbers. If Taylor Head can start coming alive to help Joe Gill on that outside pin, we could be having a different conversation about Arkansas moving forward. Maggie Cartwright, too, if she can continue going. She just gets the kill there. She's second for Arkansas right now with seven kills. It pulls them within two. She's been in such good form as of late. Jason Watson will tell you he's been so proud of the evolution of Cartwright. Getzinger on the slide, sneaks it by the block. And Taylor Head for Arkansas was there. Getzinger goes outside of her down that line. Hope to Pettis in the middle, delay with the dig but Kentucky can't control it. I think that's a really nice job by Hannah Hogue. When you have a good pass, yes, we're expecting the ball to go to the outside pin because any pin for that matter. But if you can establish and keep running the middle to offset those pins, I think that approach is more balanced and keeps Kentucky guessing. Comes Taylor Head. Drops it in the middle. Taylor Head finds a way to put the ball down right to the donut, middle of the court. All the Kentucky players watching that ball drop. Now these are the, the two-headed monster, if you will, for Arkansas, Jill Gillen and Taylor Head. Nine kills for Jill, just two for Taylor. But she's got an ace. No, excuse me, that's Maggie Cartwright with the ace. Barely skirts this one over the net. And I would just say for Taylor Head, yes, as you're trying to find your offensive rhythm, 
impact the game in other ways, from the service line, as a blocker with your defense, and she's been doing that. She'll find herself offensively. It just takes a matter of time. Rome going over on two. First time she's done that today. Kentucky take care in it, taking care of that first contact. That's how it sets up their offense. But the middle blocker cheating out to the pin to Aaron Lamb. And Aaron, Emma Grome sees that and takes advantage. Emma Grome was last year's SEC Player of the Year. Here's Taylor Head. She's doing it with finesse, right? You just saw her capitalize on a roll shot to the donut to the middle of the court. There she just tips the ball through the blocker's hands. Sometimes that's what you need to do to find your offensive rhythm. It's like a free throw shooter. If you're not finding your shot on the basketball court, hit a few free throws, then you find your shot. Yeah, you see it go in. Delay out of the back row. Brooklyn Delay's got seven. So much growth from Brooklyn Delay, number 17 in white. She passes this ball, gets in position to hit the big, and one-on-one, -on -one, look at her cross-body swing. Very impressive. This time last year, she was playing high school basketball. Now she's playing in the round of 16. Bevin, what a save! Pettis, dug up by Groom. And it sails on Rutherford, point for the Hogs. Tied up for the 10th time. I think you're going to say that a couple more times I as think we move so. throughout the afternoon. Rome calling on Teeler. Wow, cut it. In the work that Ajani Teeler has to do to get her body around that ball and go wrist away is not easy. That was that stack right rotation for Kentucky. Uh, but Kentucky able to side out on the first attempt. Hope to Gillen. She makes it look so easy. That's, she's in double figures now with 10. I just can't imagine jumping 36 inches in the air, and that's what she does. She comes inside a little bit, able to beat the block inside and go cross court hard angle beating Molly Tuzzo there for the dig. And jumping that high and hard every time. She never fades either, it doesn't seem. If this were to go five sets, she'd still be jumping as high as she is in the first set, and that's incredible. Yeah, and that's something, too, Arkansas thinks about. They think about rest and recovery for this group because they do to. have to work so hard being an undersized team, and they've gotten rest and recovery coming into this weekend. And that's what head coach Jason Watson talked about a lot. He has learned that this team needs more rest than he thinks. Tooling the block is Jill Gillen. No attacking errors for Jill Gillen. It is a race to 25 points. Hogue will go to Cartwright. Tuzzo sets up Rutherford. And a net violation on Kentucky. Unfortunately for Kentucky, Grome digs that first ball. So a good job by Arkansas taking the setter out of the play. But Tuzzo puts up that second ball set, pushes Rutherford a little bit too tight in the net. Got to control that ball a little bit better. First lead for Arkansas since it was 11 to 10. And a double contact called on Emma Grohl. That's unusual. 22-20, Arkansas with the lead. Kentucky. Arkansas has not beaten Kentucky since 2012. First time these two programs have faced off in the big dance. I think this would be the most meaningful win for well, Arkansas. I would say so. They've never been to a regional final. That could change today. Getzinger is blocked. Brooklyn delay. Hold back to Cartwright who tips. Tuzzo's there. Delay again. She'll go off speed. Cartwright turns it too much. Both teams, both sides of the net, ready for that short tip over the net. Tezzo did a fantastic job picking that ball up and getting out of offensive traffic.
Taylor Head, dug by Rutherford. Tuzzo will set up delay. Oh my yes. gosh. Oh, that's what you want as a hitter, right? Open down. A one on nine? Yes, yes, that's what you want. Absolutely. Emma Grom, the athleticism. This ball, she turns, jump sets. It looks like she's going to attack it. So the block for Arkansas jumps with her. Delay wide open on the pin. So sick. And she doesn't want any part of it either. Emma Grome wants nothing to do with attention, height, spotlight. She is a true setter. She just likes setting up her attackers, putting them in the best position possible for them to pressure situations who's won a national championship. That sometimes makes all the difference in the world. So to be able to have that ally on the bench in Madison Lilly makes a huge difference for Emma Grom. Madison described Emma to us as being a rhythmic setter. So much fun that Madison Lilly is having working with Emma Grom. Tied up at 22. Off of the block goes Taylor Head, and Arkansas needs two more points. Taylor Head working out of those offensive struggles. Still hitting negative, but getting better and helping contribute right now for Arkansas. Grom with one hand. Getzinger has to save it with one hand of her own, and Pettis in the middle of the floor in his set point Arkansas. And that's a great job by Hannah Hogue. Similar situation, she beats the block and she's able to get Pettis in a one-on-none situation. She had the whole net to work with. Kentucky takes a timeout. It's final one of this set as Arkansas has set point. I feel like Kentucky really leaning towards those pins, leaving that middle attack open. Right in set two. Courtney Jackson will serve for the set. And she gets it on an ace! We will at least play four. Arkansas wins a close second set them in rhythm very settled in that entirety of that second set that sometimes can make the difference in a match so if you're Kentucky come out and assert yourself as a dominant force offensively like we saw in that first set Molly Tuzzo will serve first for the Wildcats at least playing four sets Hogue with the bump set back to Jill Gillen and two blockers there. So dangerous when Reagan Rutherford and Ajani Teeler pair up. Well, Kentucky trying to load up Jill Gillen. She is that front row left attacker. Make her pass and then work for her approach. Bump set. She tries to blast low through that seam and Ajani Teeler's there for Kentucky. Four blocks for Ajani Teeler in this match and the service error by Tuzzo. And that's another way to establish dominance, right? There is a clear size advantage for Kentucky in this match. When you look at these two rosters, you need to start acting like it at the net when you're blocking these smaller hitters. And Kentucky had double figure blocks in their last meeting, which was a sweep against Arkansas. The tempo, the rhythm, something's going on between Rome and Rutherford. They're going to figure it out, but they have not so far. That's usually one of the most solid connections on the floor for Kentucky. You're not used to seeing Reagan Rutherford tip the ball as much as she is. Delay. Out. And a long swing for Brooklyn Delay. In the fifth ace for Arkansas in this match, Jill Gillen serving with pace to that space in the corner. 52 aces on the season for Jill Gillen. She is their career ace leader. They try Rutherford again, and again, the connection not there. She's having to tip. I've, I have never seen her tip this much. Yeah. It's not as if the set is low, though, and she doesn't have time to get there to I make agree. a swing. 
it's a mindset. If you're the coach, you say, hey, get your feet there and swing at the ball. Work your way back into rhythm. Again, you see the middle blockers for Kentucky cheating out to the pins. Force it inside. Getzinger is blocked. Rutherford takes it, gets a swing off, and does get a touch. But again, that was on a bump set, not a set from Emma Grohl. Taylor Head, look at the first set, Head had one kill and five errors. In the second set, three kills, no errors. Hannah Hoke pushing the tempo of that ball out to that antenna, giving her both options, cross court or line. As an undersized attacker, both her and Jill Guild, they do such a nice job of finding the hands and using them to their advantage. Delay with authority is dug up by Hoke. Grown back to Delay. Here comes Rutherford. She does get a swing. There it is. And that's so important for this Kentucky offense. They need to attack from both pins. That's what makes their offense go. But how about Hannah Hogue, the right back defender for Arkansas, just putting her helmet on down that line. It's scary with I love it. delay attacking. Hogue is one dig away from a double-double. Tries to get tricky. There's Hogue's 10th dig. And a double contact whistled against Arkansas. Both teams know to attack the setter, make that setter and right back, take that first ball so someone else needs to set the ball. And there you see the problems it causes for Arkansas. Courtney Jackson, double contact on that set. Tania Pettis tagging the line. Pettis has been so efficient today. She gets set on that kind of 31 gap set, a couple feet away from the setter. She does a really nice job getting on top of it and moving around. Sanaya Pettis spent two seasons at Mississippi State, was a starter in both years of being there, had 57 blocks last season for the Bulldogs before becoming an Arkansas Razorback. She's hitting 325 on the year to lead Arkansas. Delay off hands. How about the quality of the dig oh, but from a net Tezza. violation. Sorry. Oh. Wow. Momentum Keller, right? Great swing, high hands, called in the net. An ace for Cartwright. Second time Cartwright has gone cross court like that, and she's tagged Whitworth there. Passing for Kentucky. She ended the second set with an ace against Whitworth, and there gets another. Six aces on the day for Arkansas. And it follows it with a service error. When I asked Jason Watson yesterday about serving, how do you guys practice it, how much time, they said, look, we play a lot of six on six because when you serve, you get direct answers about is your serve effective? Mm -hmm. And it certainly has been working for Arkansas. Lots of answers with six aces. Yeah, if you step in the Arkansas practice gym, you're going to see them playing a lot of live action, a lot of six on six, a lot of movement, and they have efficient practices. They may not go a full two hours. As long as they get what they need to get done, accomplished, they're good. I love what he said. Why are you going to serve and hit like a bean box or a, a taped off box on the court? That's not telling you anything to your point, Holly. I want to see if you're forcing somebody out of system or not, and they've been able to do that in the second set in here in the third. They're first in the conference in aces. They have 22 more than the second person, in the second team in the SEC. Gillen is stopped by Emma Grohm. Emma Grohm setting up that block as a right sider, but Getzinger closing the scene. And I don't know about you, but it feels like Arkansas has the momentum right now. Yes. So you wonder if a big block like that leads to a momentum shift for Kentucky. It is Kentucky's sixth team block. Arkansas only has one. Pettis off with one foot. Delay out of the back row. That weapon has been 
that's so incredible for the Kentucky offense to have delay out of the back row in the high percentage with which she's killing the ball. Did not start the season playing six rotations, only did that when Reagan Rutherford was out with injury. And she has stayed there. Jill Gill again down that line. She hits it flat, but we've seen her hit all sorts of angles, all sorts of tempos for Arkansas. I mean, you know that she is going to get set. Mm -hmm. And yet she has 12 kills, two errors. You can't stop it. Grom going up at the net. Teeler from the right. Good one-handed save by Cartwright. And there it is again, Jill Gillen. You shouldn't be able to get a swing like that on a play like that. It breaks down, and you got Taylor Head running, right? Flinging this ball behind her head, but puts it in a perfect location so Jill Gill can go up and get a swing like that. That is as out of system as it gets, and yet she gets a swing like that. Remarkable. What did you say on the selection show, Katie? SEC coaches are glad to know she is out of eligibility. Yeah, they're checking their watches. Yeah. Is she done? Please tell me she's done. Not yet. She's special. I mean, obviously, she's all also helped Arkansas really make a name for themselves. Oh, yeah. And, and the players want to come play with her on the team. Great swing by Johnny Taylor, but to your point, Courtney, when we spoke with Jason Watson yesterday, it felt like he almost got emotional yeah, when he was he speaking did. about Jill Gillen. He said, I don't want this to end, talking about this run in the NCAA tournament. Yes, in part because it's been amazing for the program, but in part because he doesn't want his time with Jill Gillen to end because it has been so special between the two of them. They have built this program from the ground up. She does like to say he was his first, she was his first recruit. Her commitment. He's not sure if that's actually true, but he's going to let her run with it. Yeah, yeah at this point. We should run with it. Give her that at this point. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. No. Short serve by Grom. Doesn't matter. Jill Gillen gets out her cannon. This is an interesting rotation for Arkansas. Front row setter, they serve the middle blocker short, take her out of it. Everybody knows the ball's going to Gillen and she's still able to deliver a kill. But I like that they're almost setting her inside on purpose. They're bringing her inside Ajani Teeler and Reagan Rutherford so she can hit that sharp angle. Kentucky's block got a touch on him, but Gillen tools it. Now, if you're Kentucky, you got to be able to side out and cut the bleeding here and be able to start scoring points off your serve. This is the stack right for Kentucky with Rutherford on that right side, and they've had problems in this rotation. Especially when Hannah Ho dribbles over an ace. Lamb is doing the full sprint from right to left to get into position to hit, so she's just running by, and it almost catches her on the shoulder. 3-0 run now as Arkansas is up by five. Seven aces today for the Razorbacks. <laughs> 16 kills for Jill Gillen. Usually, Teeler and Rutherford are a wall for Kentucky, but Gillen is finding little cracks in that wall. You said there's no secrets between these two teams. Those blockers will tell you it's impressive. Yes, it is. Kentucky comes in on an 18-match winning streak, and right now they're trailing here in the third set. And they look out of sorts, quite yes. frankly, right now. Aaron Lamb with the answer. That ends a 4-0 run by Arkansas. I want to go back to Jill Gillen. Won't be the last time, I'm sure. For Hannah Hogue, her setter, when you do have an undersized attacker, how are you helping that attacker? What kind of ball are you sending out to her? A fast ball yeah. and a well-located ball. Obviously, if she's way off the net, it's hard to attack with range when you're smaller. 
but also important to keep in mind, because I know as I'm a setter, when you think fast, you often think low. It can't be low because she is undersized, right? So it can still be fast with an upward trajectory where she can go meet it in the air and attack. And that's what Hannah Hogue does a really nice job of. She just got her 17th kill. Taylor swing out of the middle and Hogue digs it. Already has a double-double today. Delay with the power right off of Zoe Evans. Watch this tip over the block. Two players on the floor pop it up and then delay high off the hands of Arkansas to score that point. Brooklyn delay leading Kentucky with 10 kills. Here comes Taylor Head. And delay was ready for it to come back. Great job again by Delay, just recognizing the situation, going up and taking a swing when the ball was tight on the net. Kentucky's made a substitution. Megan Wilson is in number one in white. And she's in for Reagan Rutherford. And swing on the right side. Usually she's an outside hitter. position though is that right side she played some outside hitter when she was at Oklahoma but mostly on the right side she brings a big block as well get singer is long and it's 1913 Arkansas Right now, Kentucky looks a little out of sorts. I feel like Reagan Rutherford is one of their emotional leaders on the court. Megan Wilson. Rejected by Head. Great pairing there between Head and Pettis going up together. Not an overly big block. But head, she sets it. She realizes there's a little bit of a gap, so she reaches in to close it. Heads up play. That singer trying to hustle off of one foot, stopped by Arkansas. Look at Sanaya Pettis work. And right now, Arkansas is feeling it. They have all the momentum. They realize they're forcing Kentucky out of sync. You can feel it. Arkansas, what a response after that first set to come back like this. And they're making plays when it counts. Razorbacks on a 9-3 to three run. That is out, and Jill Gillen pulls up just in time. Talk about following it to the line. Uh, she follows this one almost too closely to the line and pulls off of it at the last second. Almost hit her. Kentucky has no timeouts and a huge hole to climb out of. Delayed shipping away. We talked about this early in the first set. This one looks like Arkansas will likely win the third set, but if you're Kentucky, can you regroup here and start to build some momentum that you can carry with you to the fourth set? Reagan Rutherford watching right now. Delay, off hands, dug by Gillen. In comes Cartwright, dug by Bevan. Get Singer. Courtney Jackson all over it. And Taylor Head finishes it. Two points away now for Arkansas. Unbelievable, the defense. Arkansas touching everything, and now Taylor Head has been able to hit for positive numbers. Big swing through the Emma Grome Get Singer block for Kentucky. Taylor had struggled at the beginning of this match, but has climbed out of the negative. And she can add to it, set point Arkansas. And this is what we're used to seeing from Arkansas, a one-two punch on that outside pin. When Gillen checks into the back row, head picks up right where she left off.
Getzinger on the slide, tooling the block of Taylor Head. Kentucky has work to do trying to find some momentum. Second set point, Arkansas. Both setters front row. Taylor Head has a cannon too. An eight to two run to end set three and Arkansas leads the match two to one. What an unbelievable response from Arkansas to snatch the momentum. Yeah, Kentucky pulled her in that third set and put in Megan Wilson in her spot. Getzinger has found so much success this afternoon. If you've got the pass in your Emma Grom, I would continue to feed her when she is in the front row. And if anybody can regroup, it's Kentucky, right? This is a resilient group. They started the season three and seven, didn't exactly know which way they were heading. And then they found themselves as a team and have won their last 18. Six of Kentucky's first eight opponents were ranked as the double is called against Arkansas. They started three and seven on the year and then figured it out. They have won 18 straight since then, including their seventh straight SEC title, but they're in trouble now. They must win this set in order to extend the match here in the round of 16. Backside to Teeler. Great dig by Jackson. Teeler again. Jackson with the set to Gillen. Swiping it off the block. Kentucky's upset. They thought that that was a double contact on that second set there. Up ref says it's clean. Jill Gillen, 17 kills, six of those coming in set number three. Out of the back row, delay, and Hannah Hogue. Her defense has been solid. Courtright terminates. Hannah Hope knows that ball's coming with some heat from Brooklyn Delay out of the back row, but she stands her ground, pops it up so her teammate can put up that second transition ball. And that ball was spinning so badly. The fact that it came out clean from Jill Gill's hands on the set, it's pretty impressive. Service error for Arkansas. And Reagan Rutherford checking back in. Kentucky needs her. She's only hitting 100. This is a player that hits over 300 on the season and was hitting 432 in the tournament coming into this match. Bevan all over it. Delay gets the swing. Hope to Cartwright. Tipping into the block, and Aaron Lamb knew it. Love the fire from Aaron Lamb, and right now Kentucky needs that energy to gain that momentum back on their side because Arkansas took care of it in the last set. Lamb playing with urgency. You got to have urgency if you're Kentucky here. Every point matters. They're going to Cartwright a lot, and you see why. That's 11 kills. She's one of two in double figures for the Hogs. Bevan takes the first contact. They go to the middle with the Johnny Teeler. Such a good run. Last rotation, Kentucky just passing with two players, but Bevan puts up a perfect pass, and a Johnny Teeler working to get her body around that ball, wrist away. Another kill out of the middle for Kentucky. I love that she hits away from her body, right? Her body's taking her one way, and she goes the opposite direction. Really hard to defend. And Hogue with one hand. Somehow Arkansas gets it back over. Delay off the block. Jackson on the hustle. Got to go over. All alone, Taylor Head and the hustle in that rally to keep the ball alive for Arkansas. 
Craig Skinner, the entire Kentucky team arguing that ball. Because Courtney Jackson makes a play, but she goes underneath the net. But because she wasn't in the court of play when it happened, I believe it's going to stand. But that's why Kentucky's got a gripe with that play. She comes under the net, but she came in the red part of the Terra Flex, not that cork inside. I also think, too, there was nobody in her vicinity. Exactly. She That's wasn't in danger point. of yep. injuring anyone. Mm -hmm. That's why they let it play on. Jackson in her third straight year as the starting libero for Arkansas. Taylor back in the middle. And a little <laughs> gesture to the crowd. Taylor and Getzinger almost took each other out, subbing in. Kentucky finding a lot of success from their middle blockers right now offensively. I just give Pettis the ball every time I could. She's been great, too. She runs that slide so effectively for Arkansas. Down that line, outside. Pezzo can't come up with it. Sonia Pettis has a full stat line right now. Seven kills, hitting 353, two digs, four blocks. We talk so much about the pins in Taylor Head and Jill Gillen, but Pettis has been good. Maggie Cartwright. Middles are your workhorse, right? They're yep. your quiet workhorse. You don't necessarily notice it when they're getting it done. But by the end of the match, you realize it's a necessary performance. There goes Pettis again. And that whole play started with a deflection. Hannah Hogue was one-on-one -on -one with the left side attacker, Delay, and she got a nice defensive touch, and they're able to attack back. Delay dug up by head. Brooklyn Delay too aggressive yeah. on that ball, reaching over. Arkansas setters allowed to go up and set that ball. Got to read the arc of that ball, right? And just recognize, got to lay off of it for a time. Let her set the ball and regroup. First lead for Arkansas. They're on a 3-0 run. Rutherford. It hit the block and then the antenna, so the point goes to Kentucky. Reagan Rutherford working it off the outside hand, out of bounds, good tool. How was that connection compared to what we've seen? We haven't seen it often. Yeah. I, mean, I think that was her first set since checking back into the game. Great play. That's Rutherford diving. Pettis. All the little things right now. Yeah, Rutherford trying to make things happen, happen on the defensive end, but nobody can get it done at the net. Similarly to the conversation we had about Taylor Head for Reagan Rutherford, right? If you're not able to impact the game offensively like you're used to, how can you impact the game in other ways? From your block, from your communication, leadership, your serve. First kill for Jill Gillen in this set. Jada Lawson with a tough serve, overpass, and, excuse me, block. Gillen there to protect the net. Ooh, Getzinger sneaks it under Jill Gill. A good setup by Jill Gill and just too much power from Getzinger. Arkansas leading nine to eight. This is a must-win set for Kentucky to extend the match. <laughs> Lamb hunting it, chasing it down, and creates out of a tough situation. How about this overhand dig by Audrey Whitworth and then Aaron Lamb to get behind that mm -hmm. ball and hit with that kind of power. That's a brave swing. You usually see people roll shot or just tip Definitely. it. But to go with it with power, excellent. Dylan reaching back, Rome to Lamb. And they go fast. And again, it's because Grome jump sets this ball. She attracts and holds these blockers. You think that she's gonna be able to tip it. 
but instead she gets Aaron Lamb in a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's a heads up play by the setter for Arkansas, Hannah Hope. The middle blocker, watch Getzinger in the middle of the court in white. She's cheating out to the pin. That leaves the net open for Hannah Hogue. Second kill for the setter, Hannah Hogue. Nice response from Getzinger after missing on the setter dump. So now Getzinger will step back. Kentucky up by a point. She serves looking for Taylor Head, I think, but it went long. Or maybe where's Waldo? Yes. Back there in the end zone. He's not making himself very hidden. I can see him right there. Yeah. Front row. I didn't know if that was just a Nebraska get up or if it actually was well though. Oh, Ajani Teeler saw a big hole. The versatility of Ajani Teeler able to attack from that right side gives them another offensive option. And now, again, Reagan Rutherford in the front row for Kentucky. Hopefully she can find her rhythm. Well, that was Ajani Teeler's original position was in the opposite and she actually moved back there this season when Reagan Rutherford was out with that injury then had to readjust to playing in the middle again. Dig by Jackson. Taylor Head on the approach. Lamb. And a net violation on Arkansas. Kentucky fans are not liking the second contact out of the hands of Arkansas. Yeah, Cartwright stepped in there for Hogue to set that second ball. Sometimes the setters, you just want people to get out of your way and just let you do your job. So they confirm that call. Arkansas will have one challenge remaining unless we go to a fifth set. How has Kentucky looked in this set compared to set three? A little better. I think they've got some offense out of the middle. Better block touches as well. I think they definitely look more in sync and in rhythm. And Aaron Lamb has been another bright spot. She's taken some big swings in transition. And she's got one speed, and that's all out. That gives her 12 kills. Kentucky has its largest lead. Aaron Lamb is hitting 375, too. I think it was a double? I did. They're letting the ball move quite a bit coming out. It doesn't matter whose hands it's coming out of, but they're letting the ball move. Not something you can review or challenge. Jackson just long on the serve. Kentucky is the first to 15, a spot in the regional final. It, Arkansas is seeking its first round of eight appearance in school history. Meanwhile, Kentucky's trying to get there for the third time in the last seven seasons. And Reagan Rutherford, who has been such a consistent force for them, is struggling today. Yeah, she has, which is surprising because she is usually such a steadying force for this Kentucky offense. I know Craig Skinner went to Megan Wilson for a blip there in the third set. I think just to give something different, to give a different look because that set was kind of foregone conclusion at that point. Reagan Rutherford got you here. She's going to have to get you through this. Grome to a Johnny Teeler who just hung in the air. And different players have to step up in different situations. And I'll tell you, Ajani Teeler is flying high. She has been so good on that gap set. Be nice to have that hang time. Oh, my it? goodness. He's so fun, I feel like. It comes head and the block. Reagan Rutherford. Can you impact the game in different ways? That's one of the first ways to do it. Great setup by Reagan Rutherford. That ball catches her inside hand. Excellent block. And she was so disciplined on that press. 
Arkansas. That one sails on Bevan. Courtney, you showed a graphic. Third regionals for Kentucky in seven seasons, first for Arkansas. Arkansas doesn't look phased to be on this stage whatsoever. No. They look very calm and relaxed, in my opinion. The pressure not too big. A block and then a kill for Rutherford, starting to get things going. Reagan Rutherford told us while she was sitting out, she got to observe for those six matches, got to learn about more about her leadership role, how she can still have an impact when she's not on the floor. Service error there by Rutherford. A Kentucky win in this set, and we go to five. Jada Lawson in to serve for the Razorbacks. Rome pushing it to delay. Hogue with the stop. Oh my goodness, Jill Gillen by herself, stopping Getzinger on the slide. On an island, you expect it to go back out to delay. They flip it to Getzinger. She dives in to seal cross court. Got a little net there too, yep. but nice job by Gillen. They go right back to her connection, not perfect. Room to delay. And Brooklyn delay leading Kentucky with 13. Back to back service errors for Kentucky, trying to get to 20. Arkansas definitely not out of this set. If they win this set, they win the match. Girl using delay out of the back row. Hogue to Gillen. Gillen take two, dug by Bevan. Delay back row. You see the confidence that Emma Grome has in her freshman, freshman Brooklyn delay. In serve receive, she runs this back row attack, and then in transition goes right back to her one-on-one. -on -one. Delay wins the second one. 14 kills for Brooklyn delay, the SEC freshman of the year. Hartwright able to get that away from the defender. This is the strongest rotation for Arkansas with Jill Gillen on the back line. They've been able to score with their defense. Grom to Teeler down the line. Cartwright! What a stop! And that had a lot of hang time, right? So Erin Lamb had to wait for this ball coming over. And I think she was looking so far up at the ball, she didn't realize that Cartwright regrouped and got there for the block. In discipline for that, when that ball's coming over your back as a blocker, that's a hard move so to difficult. make. Yeah. I also love the reaction that she had after that. Cartwright into the scorer's table. We play on. Shawnee Teeler ends that. It's 21 to 19, but Maggie Cartwright literally everywhere. This ball takes off, and Maggie Cartwright lays it out over the table to keep it alive for her Arkansas team. Good news, she looks to be okay. Head again. Touch on the ball. Arkansas within one. You can tell Taylor Head is a veteran player because she's never looked rattled, even though she started off this match hitting at the negative. She's let the game come to her here lately. Aaron Lamb with.
with the response, up to 13 kills. Aaron Lamb, on the other hand, just taking the game at yes. this point. Kentucky three points away from forcing a fifth set. Courtney Jackson sliding into the chairs and our friend Waldo over there. How about Molly Tezzo put a little extra something on the serve and it gets away from Jill Gillen of Arkansas. But there's a lot of volleyball left in this one. Kentucky needs two points to force a fifth. Cartwright coming in. The three pin hitters for Arkansas having a big impact, but Pettis as well in the middle has been really impressive for Arkansas. Been able to score a lot when she's in the front row. Yeah, Pettis with eight kills, five blocks. Taylor, straight filth, wow. Set point cats. Excellent response from Kentucky being able to side out. Perfect pass from Tuzzo. They run a gap set to Dealer. She gets up so high and look at the urgency. The intensity from Teeler with the chest bump. We've seen her crush the ball wrist away, but that time cross body. Off the block, where will Grome go? Back to Reagan Rutherford. Jill Gillen saved it. She'll get the swing from the back row. Grome to delay. The scrappiness on both sides. Delay sends it long. Second set point for Kentucky. It'll be interesting to see where does Emma Grome go with the ball here if she gets a perfect pass. Who does she rely on in this big moment to close out set four? It's Delay. Back to her freshman. And Kentucky has forced a fifth set. Nothing better than five setters. Nothing better. Wouldn't have it any other way. A spot will go very fast. We play to 15 points. Elise Getzinger will start us off. Gillen is blocked. She'll get a second take. Dug by delay. Here comes Teeler on the right side. Taylor head out of the back row. Love the tandem. Really nice job. There's eye candy right with the middle blocker. Pettis runs forward, and then head comes right over top of her from the back row to get that kill. You're focused on the middle blocker, and you don't realize head's coming right behind her. Brooklyn Delay will try her hand out of the back row. Gillen with the set, but blocked. Gillen again, dug up by Whitworth. Jill Gillen, give her 18. That's three swings in one rally. One, she gets blocked, covers herself. Second one, she betters and goes high, deep corner. And then the third one, she solves it by getting a kill. I mean, that's so impressive. She betters her swings throughout a rally. McGrome on the move. It's tight. It was touched by Arkansas. So Kentucky gets another chance, and you give it up for Erin Lamb, who's up to 14. She's one of four Kentucky Wildcats in double figures. First of all, Erin Lamb tipped the ball into the block, recycles it, and resets the offense for Kentucky to set herself up for a kill there. Looks like she and Rutherford collided. Arkansas takes the advantage. Anna Hope goes at Rutherford. It goes over, and Jill Gillen was waiting. Four to one here in the fifth set. 
Hannah Hope picking on Rutherford in the back row there from a passing standpoint. Nice job by Jill Gillen redirecting that overpass across the court. Johnny Taylor, Hannah Hope underneath it. Lamb rejected and all the momentum with Arkansas right now. But it's because of the digs from Hannah Hope keeping them in the rally, putting so much pressure on Kentucky to be perfect offensively. Look at Hannah Hope throwing her body under that ball. And then Erin Lamb thinks she needs to do more and this one falls short in the net. So Kentucky's got to call a timeout. Arkansas on a 3-0 third annual WNBA draft lottery from Bristol. Here in the fifth set in the round of 16, winner will face Nebraska on Saturday. It's all Arkansas right now. They're out to a 5-1 to one lead. So the momentum with the Hawks. Reagan Rutherford, a good sign for Kentucky. Nice response by Kentucky coming out of the timeout. You have to cut the bleeding. You got to be able to side out efficiently. Great job by Reagan Rutherford going cross court there. Playing to 15. If you play Arkansas, you know Arkansas likes to run Maggie Cartwright out of the middle of the court. She's got so much range both directions. This one cross body. Look out below. She crushed that ball. Chrome goes with Teeler, and it's wide. That puts Kentucky at 29 hitting errors, and Craig Skinner is going to challenge this. If it stands, that ties their season high. As soon as Johnny Teeler hit that ball, every Kentucky player immediately turned to Craig Skinner and asked for him to challenge it. That's a tough angle because Hogue's obviously set up defensively there, so it's hard to tell. Ooh. If it grabs any part of that white line, it is in. I thought I got it. I usually trust Holly. Ooh. Nice camera work in the truck. And it was in. Kentucky still has two challenges remaining. Each team got an additional challenge when we hit the fifth set. Huge challenge. 7-2 feels a lot different than 6-3. just dropped out of oh, that yeah. serve. Gillen was lined up and it was a flat clean, as you would say, clean serve. Look at the bottom drop, what a serve. And right back to it, Gillen gets underneath it. Regan Rutherford on the dive. Hogue to Gillen out of the back row. In comes Head. Off of Kentucky's block, it's seven to four. Rutherford got up to block that defensively just a little bit too late. Tough first contact by DeLay. Jackson going to head. Gillen to Cartwright. Rutherford turns it down the line. Arkansas is going to scramble, but they get it back over. And an easy off-speed swing by Rutherford. Taylor Hedden with the stop! Arkansas the first to eight, and we will switch sides. 
Really nice job by Taylor Head staying inside, not leaving early to go against Reagan Rutherford. She gets up against Getzinger, gets his one on one stub block. And that's a gamble for the left sider to come all the way to the middle and leave Reagan Rutherford alone on the right side, but it pays off for Arkansas. Scared money don't make no money, Holly. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Arkansas has never been to the regional final. Does that change tonight in Lincoln? Nebraska awaits this winner. Delay scores there. That one gets away from the Arkansas defense, and this is go time for Kentucky. John Cook watching on. Who will his Nebraska Cornhuskers face on Saturday? Pettis, and that is out, a rare error by Sanaya Pettis. She has been so clutch for them today. A little bit of a low set there, so she couldn't get on top, she pushed it instead. Cartwright, off hands. Delay tipped that with her left hand. Hannah Hope calling on Taylor Head, and Kentucky's block was bigger. They're within one. Arkansas, depending on how this goes, they've laid it all on the line. They have done everything possible to win this game today. You got to take a lot of pride in that. You know they want the win. Taylor Head does. That's nine to seven now. Arkansas ends a 3-0 run by Kentucky. Cartwright, one of those double doubles, is back behind the service line. 15 kills, 11 digs, two aces. Bevan saved a third. Hope going middle with Pettis. Getzinger off of one foot into the tape. Arkansas hit 10. Elise Getzinger likes that low seam ball on the slide in the block for Arkansas there, and she hits that one low. has been, excuse me, delays, but Doug in that angle tries to do something else with it, just turning it a little bit wide for Kentucky. Timeout, Kentucky. In the middle, moving their left sider all the way over, trying to commit to that other pin, and it, it's really paid off. If you're Kentucky in this moment, you gotta come out, side out efficiently, right? Kentucky hitting zeros in this fifth set when Arkansas is hitting 200. You can't play scared, though. You can't nope. tip your way out nope. of this. You gotta trust what you've done all season long, that it's gonna be good enough. Give it your all here for the last few points of this fifth set. Kentucky out of timeouts for the fifth set and the match. Getzinger does it with one blocker in front of her. That was a good rotation for Kentucky to get out of front row setter and only Getzinger in delay in the front row in that last rotation. to head, busting up the Cats block. Taylor Head, give her 13. Hoag so fast ahead for the kill. Getzinger chasing the whole time. Worth mentioning, both setters are live, meaning they're both in front row. They don't dump the ball often, but something to keep an eye on. Scrum sends it out to Aaron Lamb. She's dug by Taylor Head. Lamb finding the open court. 
Aaron Lamb usually likes to take the big swing, but that time saw the opening in the middle of the court, throws it down for Kentucky. Arkansas needs just two more points. Jada Lawson in the match for the Razorbacks. And it's an ace match point, Arkansas. That's her second ace of the match, and that one just gets away the seam between the two Kentucky players. On the cusp of history. Rome trying Teeler. We play on. Second match point, Arkansas. Hogue to Jill Gillen. Yeah. 